I'm Laura Ingram, and this is The Ingram Angle from Los Angeles tonight. Thanks for being with us on a very busy night. We begin with the real killing machine. Now, in the wake of the horrific murders of Ty Tyra Nichols, the debate about police reform has once again been reignited. When you look at what is taking place, the culture, uh, the police culture, we need reform. We need to dismantle these systems and these policies. We need to reimagine. We need to restructure. We need to reconfigure the way in which we police. Here we are still waiting for real reform to the way policing is conducted in this country. Actually, the reform Al Sharpton and the others are pining for already happened in Memphis. That police department already revised its policies following the murder of George Floyd. The effort was called Reimagine Policing in Memphis. Now, it was called Reimagine Policing, but what was really reimagined? Well, yeah, it was reimagined with awful consequences. Now, in addition to addressing excessive force, the department also loosened its hiring standards. In fact, two of the five officers involved in the killing of Nichols were hired during this period. So when folks like Cory Booker or Al Sharpton claim that this shows the overwhelming need for what they call police reform, well, I agree. We need to reform their reforms. Like Memphis, Chicago lowered its hiring standards for police in 2022. They were following the likes of Philadelphia and New Orleans. They also instituted changes in recent years. So how's that all working out? Well, New Orleans just became the murder capital of the United States. Philadelphia had a record high number of homicides in 2021, and Chicago saw 700 homicides in 2022 alone. So by reducing standards, the goal was to produce what? A more equitable representative police force. But it's only led to more death and more crime. Now, you might have noticed something as it relates to the Tyree Nichols story. The video is objectively far more gruesome and disturbing than the George Floyd video. And yet... There weren't violent protests. Things have remained relatively peaceful. Demonstrators marched in major cities, including Atlanta, Los Angeles, and Phoenix. The majority of the protests remained peaceful. No riots. <laughs> the news coverage has already begun to kind of taper off. Have you noticed that? So why is that? Because there isn't a racial element to it. So next time you hear caterwauling from Ben Crump and company, ask yourselves if they're really working to help the communities the activists purport to care so much about. But recognize what's happening here. It's a continual, it's a nonstop disrespect and demeaning of law enforcement across the country. This has been happening for decades, really. It predates George Floyd. The narrative goes like this. Number one, every police-involved shooting is presented as a racial matter that ultimately distorts good police response. Number two, left-wing prosecutors side with criminals against the people who pay their salaries. And number three, crime then spirals out of control and taxpayers end up demanding more policing. Then number four, Given the danger, the mistreatment, the lack of respect, recruitment suffers among law enforcement, which ultimately leads to cops like the Memphis Five. The left creates all the conditions for the crisis to flourish. And then the left says, oh, we have the answers. Joining me now is Brian Foley, former homicide detective commander of major crimes and chief of the detective bureau in Hartford, Connecticut, right near my hometown, of Glastonbury. Brian, why should we trust new national standards that they say will solve all of this when they're going to be written by the same folks who caused a lot of these problems in the first place? So after a lot of these things that come out, Laura, they always want to reinstitute or bring out some new changes or new training. You always hear about uh, new training. And th this, this, I hate one after an emotional incident painting uh, with a broad paintbrush all cops and all police departments across the country. Every community in every state has different police departments with different needs, and they're the ones that have, should have a say in how their police departments are trained. 
But this is not a training issue. This isn't some rookie who made a split second decision to shoot or don't shoot. And we're thinking, boy, if they had different standards, uh, this cop wouldn't have made that decision. This is this is much different. I promise you somewhere in Memphis, Tennessee, there's a police academy instructor scratching his head saying this is not how we train these five officers. Uh, this was a conscious and uh, intentional neglect from how they were trained. And I believe it's more of a lack of professionalism likely within that unit uh, of their, uh, you heard the woman say, uh, of the culture within there. Look at, the name of the unit was the Scorpion Unit. And, you, you know, and here's a lesson to p what could go wrong. Here's a lesson to police commanders around the country when you have these cool little units and you wanna put an acronym on it, don't name it after something that kills something. Uh, this, this is uh, not indicative of the police department across the United States. This is indicative of one single unit that hadn't been kept in check. And these units do a lot of good. And to get rid of the units uh, across, again, across the, the whole, whole country here or any, in our cities, the only thing that's gonna happen is violence is gonna go up in those, in, in those uh, cities where you get rid of those yeah, units. Yeah, well, in New York, they got one, uh, rid of a similar unit. A, a crime, a violent crime unit in New York. They disbanded that. Oh, how did that work out? <laughs> but I want to play this for you, Brian. One former police captain said that what happened could actually now be part of a national trend. Watch this. There is a is a place in this video where the dispatcher asks for charges and no one says anything. And so it made me wonder, is this typical? Is this something that this unit does all of the time? No mm. one can even explain why he was stopped. We hear reckless driving, but the chief says we don't have any evidence that there was reckless driving. Yeah. yeah. So is this a trend of some sort? Is this something that they do nightly? OK, is that a fair analysis? So look at these types of units um, are involved in, I think there's more to come on this story, Laura, to be honest with you. These types of units don't do rips for reckless driving. Uh, something doesn't stand, something doesn't strike me a, as right with uh, what happened on how they would pull somebody over for reckless, unless that person was directly involved in violence. That type of unit is going after your most violent offenders, getting them off the street. This doesn't uh, fit the scenario. And, and again, I think it's just one isolated unit um, acting a little bit rogue and with, with a, obviously a completely unprofessional culture. You saw hoodies, you saw sneakers as, as a part of their uniforms. Um, these units have to be kept in, in check but they do so much good and they, they countless units across the United States to get countless guns, countless killers off the streets. We had one in Hartford, Connecticut. It, it was fantastic. You can't tell how many lives they saved it, but they have to be kept in check. And, you know, they have to also be a part of the community and wanted by the community. Again, I'll go back to the name, the Scorpion Unit. You named it after something that kills things. Um, not well planned out there uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. All right, Brian, great to see you tonight. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.